Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Janet Pope from At Room Now, and my Twitter handle is at Janet Burdope. I'm coming to you live from ULAR 2022 in the cold and rainy but beautiful city of Copenhagen. I want to talk about the ULAR RA guidelines. Is it more of the same? So um, on the first day of the meeting, the updated 2022 Rheumatoid Arthritis ULAR guidelines were presented. I do have a disclosure. I was part of the guidelines, so maybe a bit of insider information that you might want to ask me about. However, nothing too earth shattering. So first of all, are they more of the same? Um, they were different from the ACR in past saying that initially you should do combination therapy, looking at methotrexate plus glucocorticoids and tapering down. So the ACR said, don't use glucocorticoids. So that needed to be resolved. So with a systematic review, it was found that um, a rapid taper of glucocorticoids, whether you're starting high or medium dose with a rapid taper does seem to affect the outcomes of better remission, um, earlier deep response, things like that. So the guidelines have been um, uh, updated or tweaked a bit saying maybe use with caution glucocorticoids, but try to use the, the amount of time that is the least to get the patient off of treatment. The other thing is they talked about tapering. So the ACR guidelines had talked about, hey, if a drug doesn't work, don't taper the drug that does the advanced therapy. Don't taper drugs, but if you must consider tapering, not necessarily discontinuing the uh, drug that didn't work, such as the background CSD mark. So again, ULAR did a literature search and did find randomized controlled trials that basically said the rate of flaring is about the same, with, like the Tamara study, whether you taper conventional synthetic DMARDs or the bio or uh, DMARDs. Now we don't have tapering data with targeted synthetic DMARDs. By that, I mean JAK inhibitors, but they kind of put it all in one sort of stroke and said, if between the patient and the physician, you consider tapering when a patient is in deep sustained remission and you've gotten rid of glucocorticoids and maybe NSAIDs, then with caution, you might want to decrease the CSD MARD or the advanced therapy. And either way, you have to follow the patient carefully. Then the final thing of the ULAR guidelines that is different from before is taking into account both oral surveillance that looked at cardiovascular risk, VTE as a, um, an exploratory outcome, serious infection in older age group, but also looking at MACE and malignancy. And so there is a cautionary note saying that if you're going to use a JAK inhibitor, obviously it should be a shared decision with patients, but also you want to uh, cat categorize and inform the patient um, of high CV risk, high VTE, high malignancy, and in the older their age group, slightly higher um, uh, serious infections, but that this still could be appropriate for patients and shared decision making. So ULAR updated guidelines, are they more of the same? I think mostly the same treating to a target shared decision making, but a few things that are important that have changed. So follow us at room now, and I hope that you're going to learn lots from the ULAR Congress here in Copenhagen. Thank you.